surveying our market to be like, what is your impression of Ely? When you, when you think of Ely, you're like, what do you think of? And so maybe there's, maybe there's perception issues that we don't know about, you know, but through this entire thing, market studies, um, branding, asset development, you know, to-do lists and checklists that come from other projects, it'll, it'll take in all of that into the big picture and figure out how to actually make it happen. Are there any questions or comments? Marietta, any questions? Oh, I think this is good. I think this is excellent. Okay. Well, we've certainly been uh, showered with a lot of money from Travel Nevada with our grant program, so we appreciate their support. Anybody from the audience with a question or comment on it? I would just like to extend the invite tomorrow at 6 o'clock. Um, hot pies from Sugar Salt or Salt and Craig. Um, but yeah, look over look over the, the application and kind of see what the parameters are and what they're looking for. And if it if it gets the wheels turning, you know, we, we want you at that meeting tomorrow night. So okay, I'll entertain a motion for approval. I'll move to approve. Thank you. Second. I'll second. I'll second. Okay. Um, it's been moved and seconded. Uh, any further discussion? Hearing none. All in, uh, in agreement, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, and thanks for doing the heavy lifting. Absolutely. Okay, we'll move to discussion information items. Uh, the tourism survey. All right, so in your packet, you've got a printout of what I've been working on. Uh, this, this project was kind of started because we do have a lot of new people moving into the community, um, and and of course, a lot of people who've lived here for a while that may or may not know what White Pine County Tourism does. So you've seen the first version of this. This is the updated version. So it, it essentially, what we did is we just changed the order of the questions to kind of match the entire way through. But it's everything from, you know, how important is tourism? How much does it impact your life? Why do you think people come here? What are your top attractions, must-see things? Where do you take people when they come to town? And then it also goes into events, of course. And then it also goes into, you know, tell us what new stuff you want to see. Or tell us where you think we could do better in regards to, you know, say, say somebody lo absolutely loves the White Pine Public Museum, and they've got a bunch of ideas of things we could do, you know, to, to make that better. So, with all of the, the pillars that we kind of market in, historic assets, arts and cultural, um, outdoor recreation, and events. And then it dives into where you get your information. Um, I still feel like a lot of people uh, on whatever social media they're on maybe don't follow Visit Ely Nevada, even though the ones who do are like, oh my goodness, you know, it, it, they're, it, it's such great pages. Um, the calendar on the website, all of that stuff, and then it goes into some basic demographics. Um, how old are you and how long have you lived in White Pine County? Just to see, you know, what new people's impressions are versus, you know, white person, stuff like that. Um, as well as the Bristlecone Convention Center. So it's, you know, it's getting, a, it's getting the vibe of the community on what they think of us, but from a self-serving end of it too, it's also being like, hey, we have a Facebook page, do you follow it? We have a Twitter page, we have an Instagram page. We have a calendar, do you know about that? You know, and just <clears throat> getting our messaging out there. So this, people will be able to fill this out in a print version, um, and they will all, this will also be sent out um, via SurveyMonkey um, to do digitally as well. So SurveyMonkey, it's nice because it'll, it'll tabulate everything and give us the results. We'll just have to enter these ones in manually um, to go ahead and do the paper copies. But we want to get everybody's opinion no matter how tech savvy they are. Any comments or questions? I just have a couple. I, uh, we've got the wrong call number for KDSS. Oh, shoot. And then um, I, what about an area for additional comments? OK. Because we want to hear you know, if there's some things we've missed or mm -hmm. something they really mm -hmm. love. Good they call. can tell us or something <clears throat> they really hate. Great idea. Yeah, just a text box. Cool. What's KDSS's call number? 92.7. It's only a little bit off. You kind of forget when there's only two radio stations. It's already automatically dialed. You just hit scan and it hits it. <laughs> okay, I'd like to entertain a motion for approval to 
oh, we just, we don't, this is discussion only. You're going to be doing this. Okay. When, when is the launch date? Uh, once I make those corrections. <laughs> okay. And you're going to the paper copies, we'll need to take them to the senior center mm -hmm. and at the visitor center. Mm -hmm. Any other places that um, town council? You know what, I'll, uh, yeah, we will, I will pound the pavement. We'll make sure we get them out in all the places and mm -hmm. um, get them out to our businesses, whether it'll be on social. We were even talking about having it, you know, doing the QR code directly to the survey and then putting ads in both the papers. Mm -hmm. um, so. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Um, it's interesting to get the result. All right, the next discussion item is engagement of RCG Economics, LLC, to conduct a study regarding the feasibility of the proposed hotel casino ski resort project with a $13,000 contribution, which is one third the cost. Um, White Pine County has committed to paying 26,000 or two thirds of the fee, assuming partnership with White Pine County Tourism and Recreation. So I believe, is it Ian you're going yep. to take this one? Yeah. Um, Kyle, I dropped the ball <coughs> and I should have had you print in addition to this, the um, the RCG uh, proposal, but maybe, oh, shoot, maybe okay. this is probably enough. Um, <clears throat> this is just the next logical step in this project we've been working so hard on for so long. And um, I don't know if I ever thanked him publicly, but um, Brian and his wife did a wonderful job of taking our, our little, um, our first trip here when Tim Covey came up to even find out if this was a, even a good idea and you guys really pulled out the, the ski nerds and just did a great job of showing them what we had. Because yeah, I wouldn't have known how to show them. Yeah, I just kind of, in theory, I'm like, hey, we got mountains and I think this is a good idea. But <laughs> you guys really like showed him why it was a really good idea. And, and he came away so encouraged. And that's really why we're here today is because uh, an industry professional came out and, and walked away going, this, this could really work. Um, and so the next step is, that's really cool that we all have the opinion that this could work. We need a credible opinion <laughs> the, where someone has done the math, done the research, so that um, either we will be told definitively that this won't work, um, which is useful information, or um, we will have very good information that we can then take to, um, to people that are currently operating casinos and ski resorts mm -hmm. and find someone who um, is willing to be the developer. And really kick this thing off, um, but we. This is the next step. We have to have information from a credible source, and not just our opinions. That is, that's a good idea. Um, so <clears throat> it's a pretty small pr price to pay. Um, the county, you know, just from my perspective, they we easily could have afforded to pay the whole thing, but. Uh, the other commissioners wanted this to be a partnership. Kyle was there, and he and I both lobbied to make sure they understood that we haven't been sitting on our hands over here. We've uh, invested a good amount um, of time, not just money, but uh, but I didn't see this as being, you know, a terrible request that we jump in at a third of the cost of what they put in up to, to see this done. And I think we can afford it, so it um, seemed like reasonable. And certainly within our wheelhouse as a tourism and recreation uh, department. So. <clears throat> Brian, any questions? I don't. Um, I always thought it was a good idea. And it's better to get a good feasible report on how it can actually happen. All ideas need some backing financially. To sell it, you're going to have to do this anyway. You have to sell that idea when you do this thing. But I don't think there's a person in Ely that hasn't looked up on a snowy year, but like, we should have a skate resort. Yep. <laughs> Marianna, what are your thoughts? This is just a discussion only. We're not voting on it today. Okay. Um, my concern is that we have not included the city uh, in this discussion at all. And we receive 93% of our revenues come from the city of Ely uh, as far as road tax money. And I just think that it would certainly be an order or two to include them in this conversation. Well, not, not, uh, you're not off on that. Um, it's mostly, it wasn't an intentional <clears throat> neglecting of them. I think we've just been slowly piecing together relevant partners as we go along. And 
we've only recently kind of gotten to this stage. Um, just so we're clear, um, RCG, so this is RCG Economics, <clears throat> they have already received the, um, the deposit and they are moving forward with this. So um, this is basically a request for us to just really partner with them. Um, the, the city has, you know, they're, they're not drowning financially, but I, I feel like I, I wouldn't have asked them for any money, but I definitely would, have, would like to know their opinion about it. I wouldn't expect them to just kick down on, on my idea or our idea that we've been doing, unless they felt like it was appropriate and they wanted to be a part of that. But I wouldn't feel right just being like, hey, we have this idea about a rule. <laughs> so, I don't know, how do you feel about all that, Kurt? I don't mean to leave you out, so. No, no, I, I'm not insulted by it by no means. Um, might not hurt to hit them up on the agenda and, and have a discussion too, see if maybe we can all partner up on it or, or their thoughts on it too. Yeah. Um, I know I've always wanted to ski resort here throughout the years. I, I go skiing two or three times a year and it's a big pain to travel 10, 15 hours away to, to some other place. I do not to knock your efforts, but I do kind of worry about the global warming, whatever you want to call it too. It's just really do want it, but it's kind of one of those things, can, can it be sustainable here? I don't know, that's probably what this report's gonna, gonna find out once and for all. Yeah, well just to be clear, they are gonna do a lot of research on the, on the economic feasibility. There's been a lot of studies on the climate stuff, as far as we know. Um, and for now, as long as it stays cold here, and no matter how warm the planet gets, it probably will stay pretty cold here for a long time. We'll be at the end of that train. Um, <clears throat> It's the, what we looked into originally, I don't remember how much detail it gets into in this report here, but um, snowmaking has come such a long way. Um, we could build a ski resort in Saudi Arabia if we could keep it cold enough. But sure, yeah, anything's possible. I just kind of, the questions in my mind, I mean, even the ice sculptures nowadays, we can't even hardly, you know, freeze the ice sculptures. We just have a tough time anymore, so, sure. you know. Is there something about to figure out? Is there a multi season? Yes. Resort, yep. so it wouldn't just be skiing in the winter time, but they would incorporate other stuff in the summertime as well. Yeah, I mean, this would be conducive to and, and very, very complementary to the mountain biking community that's, mm -hmm. that's launching out here. So, well, and I think one thing that you know we haven't been able to put in here that this study probably would is how many jobs that it would bring in, you know, and not just high level management jobs, mm -hmm. lifty jobs, supporting services jobs, and a lot of those would be, you know members of the community. So the community you know, would benefit. Yeah, yeah you, you know, know totally yeah. like not just from a tourism standpoint. But yes, from the, a, it, as a matter of fact, tourism for, for me personally was an afterthought. Um, when I ran for office, when I got into this whole political garbage, um, my whole thing was looking at the town, looking at the economics and realizing, and we have a history to prove it, that uh, our economy here is volatile. And, we're, and every time that freaking line shuts down, things go south. And <clears throat> I mean, it's rumors at this point that, that I think got dispelled, but, um, you know, just recently they, they had some bad reports, got in trouble with MSHA, all kinds of things, all kinds of guys that I know that work there were being told that they were going to shut the whole place down, and, uh, and that was going to be it. But, you know, that's over the top, but I, it, it was a reminder to me of how delicate this is. You know, any time MSHA or some other government agency can come in and decide that we've not follow the rules and be like, well, that's the end of that. Sorry, guys. And so for us to have another part of our economy here for jobs where people can get paid well and have, you know, a pretty solid career in addition to the mining, I think would just be smart. So that's, yeah, that's wintertime so slow here just kills <coughs> the downtown mer merchants for sure. Yep. yep. Rising tide lifts all boats, so this this would be nothing but an uptick in our in our tourism, I don't think it would it would have any, you know, be, it will be a hotel casino resort, but I don't see that it would cause our current casinos and hotels to have less people in them. I think it would be more. <laughs> so. Well, I have three questions, and one of them is, where who currently owns the land? Uh, it's Forest Service and it's the Mountain and BLM at the base. That's right, yeah. Bill Wolf has been heavily involved in this and can answer 
quite a few questions as well. Okay, so um, chime in if you'd like, Bill. This is, thank you for being here, by the way. Right now, um, the majority of the, of the project is BLM. Uh, there's, you know, looking at the project from a long view, of the, there is expansion possibility onto the Forest Service. But right now, the area we're looking at is all on BLM. Defiance Canyon and uh, Ward Canyon. Up Ward Canyon, there is some private ground. Um, and I believe that uh, Sprouse has that. Uh, but as part of this, uh, the Wide Plain County Lands Bill, uh, you know, directs the county to dispose of property. And so as part of the, the whole idea, then some of that ground for the base facility would be on, uh, they put that ground up for sale for the uh, base facility. And one reason is you can't have gaming on federal property. So. <laughs> The second question is, um, how much did we already fund, and where did it go? What did uh, it go for? We have we have funded just under five thousand dollars, and that was for Tim Cohey to come out twice, and also uh, lodging. And when I say just under five, it was really probably more like a little over four. Yeah, it wasn't much. Uh, yeah, and, and I think we compensated them a little bit, um, it, it, which was more of a. It almost insultingly low amount for what he provided <coughs> and, and his skill set, but he uh, he helped to prepare uh, this report and, and to give the insights, you know, with Bill to prepare this report, and so his, his consulting um, has been a part of that. Okay, my third is that I would like all of the board members to have a copy of this of the work that was done from the 80s, the report. The one that um, Sprouse did? <coughs> Uh, I think it was a community effort that did it. Well, Gary Sprouse had proposed one up on Ward Mountain. I can't remember if it was the 80s or the 90s. Now. It was the 90s. In the 90s. Yeah. And so, um, and he did a ton of work on that, and I'm sure we can, we can come up with that mm -hmm. uh, document somewhere. But at, I, the, the gist of his document was it's a doable thing. It's got the same uh, snowfall, in the report it says the same snowfall as Park City. Um, and also we're at a higher elevation. And so that's uh, conducive to uh, doing snowmaking mm -hmm. on, on a higher level than what they do at other places, so. Okay, so I, uh, for the next meeting, if, if we can get the report and copies to the board members. Sure. We want to honor the people that did this work 20, 30 years ago. We certainly don't want to dis discount what their efforts were because I think there was quite a bit of effort on that. Well, there was, and like I said, Mr. Sprouse put a lot of money into it, and um, the, where his project fell apart from what everything I had seen wasn't in the uh, sustainability of the project itself, but it was more on the political side, because he was looking for land swaps mm -hmm. and all these kind of congressional actions that would be needed, whereas in what we're looking at, it, it's, it's pretty straightforward. Um, any land to be sold, it's already part of the... Uh, agencies mandate to do that and they're actually behind schedule on what they should have been doing as far as land disposal and uh, when uh, Senator Cortez Masto was here uh, she expressed you know complete support in trying to get more of the uh, property um, in the county changed from beyond them to private. Okay so if we could do that uh, well before the next meeting and get we can make copies here of that. Okay. It's a big, it's a big report. Would would, would we want to include the economic stuff from back then, even though it probably isn't relevant now, or would we just Was include? There's a little yeah, bit I'm, not sure, I'm not sure there's a lot of economic stuff in that. It's mostly about the site and, you know, is it? it would, the what? biggest one was the gondola they were proposing. Because they, were mm -hmm. yeah. they wanted a double drop gondola, so it was like, you know, at the time it was like $150 million, which yeah. is a lot. For, but, you know, Tim was proposing a total different way of operating the resort. Sure, and times have changed. Yeah, times have changed. But I want to hold the whole report. Yeah, yeah. I don't want it edited. Okay. Okay. So, yes, we, if we can have that and get that to Kyle and we'll get the copies made. I, I really feel strongly we need to honor the people that have done the work before and understand what their thoughts were. And even if we need to talk with them, there will be some more anecdotal kind of thing. So. Um, I'm trying to be nice, but I honestly kind of have some frustration with that. Uh, not not to what you're saying, because I agree usually, but I, I would agree with that. But I, I get frustrated when <clears throat> I know that something could have 
radically and positively transformed this community over 25 years ago could have been done, but it was stopped over greed and short-sighted um, nonsense. Okay. And so that bums me out, you know. So I okay. Well, we'll go. Those are personal opinions. So we'll we'll keep it to our professionalism, and that will be. We'll everybody can read the report and ask the questions that we need at that time. So uh, the ownership would be mainly BLM right now, and it would be through a land disposal. And then um, what we've already spent is under five thousand, and they're asking for thirteen for. And this is with Tim Kohi. Yeah. No, um, this money is going to a company we've engaged out in Las Vegas that okay. is a professional. Um, Study group. Yeah, exactly. Okay. They work with UNLV. We were originally going to go to UNLV. Right. UNLV is too busy, and they usually kind of subcontract with the, with this group. So okay. That's, that's what they chose to take. Uh, just to, just to make sure we're we're clear though, the uh, the private lands would strictly be the base facility, which would be like 40 acres, and the remaining several thousand acres would be leased Especially from the BLM. The for the ski lifts and all that kind of thing. So the game park and hotel would be on private land. Strictly that, yeah. Right. So we're looking like 40 acres maybe. And it's, a, it's a really good time to deal with the BLM right now on it because, you know, they have the Silverton project, which is the only BLM ski we own. So this is another one that would be based off of that. Okay. Where's where that? is that? Um, Colorado. Oh. Okay. Well, that's good. And I'll just, I'll just add to the conversation. The report that, that we have currently, I have given that to different hotel and, and gaming uh, people here and also in Reno. Um, and essentially, it, it piqued their interest to where they're they're watching. But the questions that they did ask were, were a much higher level than I'm assuming is the answers that we would get from Correct. this this current or the study. That we're I'm sure they're going to have to do some sort of heavy study on you know bringing water out of companies like an up to actually you know just. Well, I, and, and I'm not sure that would be the way they would do yeah, it. It would be yeah. more about uh, drilling wells and pulling the water there more on site, and then what would be the effect? on Cummins Lake as part of the hydrologic study. All righty, well, since this is a discussion item only, but I believe you understand what we need before we can put this on the agenda so everyone's had time to study that. And then who will be going to the city council? You and the two of you? Um, I didn't know we agreed to go to them. I, I don't know what to go to them because I don't really have much to say other than they all, as far as I know, are aware that we're working on this. If any of them wants a copy of this report so far, they're welcome to have it. If they have questions, like in, like what would what would be what what would the city council want to know or want to hear if we were to go to them? Like, I think it'd just be a good um, icebreaker, if you will, or whatever, just to let them know what's going on, and maybe they can help out in other ways too. Just get some support with everybody. I think more or less. So it would be a discussion item of here's what, kind of what we've done and, and where we'd like to head. But again, we, get, we do receive 93% of our revenues from them, and so we always want to partner as much as we can and let them know what we're doing. And that's why you go to the council meetings and get reports. So I would, I would like that. And I don't have the verse on this, so uh, I couldn't answer any questions. Um, so they, they love me at the city council, so. Okay. <laughs> Do you want to come to the volunteer? Uh, I think they love me less, so I'm going to let Kyle go. <laughs> okay, so Kyle. Okay. Bill, can you be here for support? You bet. Okay. Right. Thanks for doing all this, Bill. You bet. Yeah, That's a lot. Very Ten much. years. Yeah, that's great. We're going to move to item C, which is the executive director's report. And so uh, I believe you have, there are copies of that. Yeah, there are, and uh, I apologize for mailing out this morning. There's some printed out right here as well. Yeah, absolutely. George, did you get your copy? No. Oh, it's Cummings. Thank you. Yes. Marietta, do you have uh, a copy with you? Did you get that email this morning? Okay. Thank you. Okay, so same format as it usually is. I'll just go right through it. Okay, uh, so we had our normal uh, bi-monthly meetings with our PR firms, uh, East River and Abbey Agency. We had a, a slew of uh, influencers and, and interviews and stuff like that uh, last month. And so this month we're kind of planning on what, is, what does winter look like, who are those winter influencers. 
uh, both for outdoor recreation, which is essentially what Abbey Agency is focusing on, um, and then uh, East River is doing all of our event press releases, getting our interviews on Las Vegas News, things like that. Um, so they're doing two completely different things. Uh, we, like I said, we had a destination development grant rollout on September 13th in the back room. 50 people attended. Uh, yesterday I went out to Eureka to uh, talk to their tourism and recreation board about how to amplify uh, the impact of the, the 50 miles of dirt roads that they just signed that they're you know, opening up for multi-use and, and encouraging people to ride bikes and things like that on it. So we kind of talked about just experiences here in, in White Pine County, how to build community around it, what an impact NICA has had, and things like that. Uh, I met with Adventure Cycling Magazine. Uh, they're going to be doing a project out here in 2023. And so uh, if you look at the map of the country, there is only one adventure trail in the state of Nevada, and that is the Pony Express Trail. And so we are certainly not lacking in that department, just in the acknowledgement of it and the representation of it. So we'll be working with them next spring to up that uh, representation in, in at least eastern Nevada. And then we are running out of visitors' guides rapidly, so we have started working on uh, updating those with new articles, new photos, making sure the information is correct, and we're looking at a reprint right at the beginning of the new year. And we are also working on a new billboard design for Murray Canyon. Uh, that billboard was very well received, but after four years, it is getting pretty sun bleached out, and it's time for a, a new design. So you'll be seeing that. Uh, from an accomplishment standpoint, room tax was 9% over uh, August this time last year. And so thank you to events like the horse races um, and everything that was going on in August that went ahead and gave that that boost. Uh, Race the Rails happened in September. We're going to do a full report at the next board meeting on, on Race the Rails and, and the itemized expenses. But we grew from, I believe, 80 last year to 120 racers this year. The amount of family that was brought up to, to about 200, 200 people that were in the freight barn for lunch that day. We had the Rifleman as band playing, um, and Salt Sucre did the, did the banquet of that. So that was, that was great. I just did an interview with London-based Hills Ball Four. Uh, they're working with Travel Nevada on informing their their travel agents over in Europe on on what Nevada has, and so it was a, it was it was very heavily weighted towards trained national park dark skies, is what we talked about for the international traveler. Um, and then last week we were successful uh, collaboration between. The City of Ely, White Pine Main Street, Tourism, uh, we've been working on this Facade Improvement Incentive Program, and that was approved by the City last week. So uh, we'll be moving forward with submitting that T-Mobile grant by the end of the week and all the other grants to try to now find funding for that. And we did hire uh, a new hire at the Visitor Center um, in the Chamber, Stephanie Gustafson. Um, she's a great addition, and I just need to work harder on, on tapping into her skill set, you know, because just another great person on the team. Wonderful. Uh, for current grants that are out, Nevada Magazine, uh, 3000 for advertising, 3400 for a seasonal event uh, card mailer that we'll probably be putting out at the beginning of the year that will showcase all of our events for the year annually, but with enough time to attend Fire Nights and things like that. And then we've been working on that trail ride, horseback trail riding content um, with Bill Wagers, and we'll have a whole bunch of we're pretty much in the information gathering section right now. Travel Nevada has opened up their second wave of marketing grants, so coming up with ideas for that, for, for more marketing grants. This destination development grant that I'm going to be writing that's due at the end of October. Great Basin Heritage Area has opened up grants, uh, so we'll be doing stuff between the museum, Main Street, and tourism to tap into that. And then the T-Mobile the hometown, I don't know if it's not holiday, it's hometown revitalization grant, I apologize. From an art standpoint, Virginia Terry came, uh, came up and asked if we would consider uh, funding the rehabilitation and sealing of the Cattle Drive uh, mural, the Larry Bude one that's on the side of, I think it's Ann Kellogg's building now, um, the most eligible building in downtown. So um, I don't know if the jailhouse still owns the grassy area next to it. Yes, we're on the parking lot now. Okay, cool. So we'll just have that conversation about the no, landscaping. and. Yeah. Norm, Norm, Norm commissioned that, and it was like one of the first ones, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was one of the first ones. Yeah, so. so yeah, so we'd, we'd, we'd love to get somebody to just completely touch it up and revitalize it and, and seal it again. Is Larry Bue still alive? 
Virginia said he is, but he's, he's certainly not getting around okay. as well as he used to. Because okay. um, I'd asked if he would be the one to, mm -hmm. to rehab it, and, and she said probably not. Um, do, 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 where are we at here? Okay, and then the uh, bowling alley mural, or the mural on the bowling alley, um, the city asked us to go back to the drawing board for a different design. Um, they had some concerns with it, all of them uh, relevant. And so we'll be working with the artists on that. Um, and they've got a meeting at 2 o'clock on Thursday. Um, what were the concerns? I don't know um, the design, so.